What's up guys, this is going to be part 2 of the trade ideas how to set up your scanner video. Uh, this today's video is going to be about the Momo scanner. Last time we talked about the gap scanner, so this time we're going to go ahead and discuss my settings, which is going to be very very simple like I promised. Uh, you guys will probably laugh at it again, but it doesn't really matter. Like I said, you know, you got to keep these things simple. Trading is as complicated as it is, you got to keep it simple and easy and uh, you know, it will just achieve its purpose in the end. So today we're going to talk about the Momo scanner and uh, again for those of you who don't have trade ideas uh, definitely go to the link in the description uh, you can go ahead and find a promo code for 15% off MADAS15 is the promo code M-A-D-A-Z15 and definitely this market has been very active you guys have been trading in this market for the past week or so lots of tickers have been popping up so much to the point where sometimes you know even I have difficulty keeping up with all of them and you know not all of them are going to be quality plays there are some plays that have been very low volume and a scanner will help you distinguish uh, which plays are high quality and which plays are not so really really important time to have something like a scanner useful and handy to you because there's just way too much going on at times and you want to be ahead of the game uh, you need something like that and some of you might be like, you know what, I, I might just use a chat room. I'm in a chat room already. I'll just wait for some guy to post it and I get my alerts there. Some of you are even cheaper than that. And you might say, you know what, I'll just get my free alerts off of Twitter. You know, so I, you know, I don't have to pay anything. It's it's right there. Why, why should I pay, you know, $60, $70 a month for a scanner like Trade Ideas? Well, if you think about it logically, where do you think these guys are posting these tickers, these plays? Where do you think they're getting it from? They're clearly getting it from a scanner or some sort of news feed or something like that themselves. So by virtue of you waiting for these guys to post it, you're already several seconds behind. Uh, you know, if it's a, not a quality play, you might end up you know buying late and, and buying near the top and then getting dumped on or, or whatever. So you gotta be careful with that. You gotta realize that these guys are probably you know the smart ones that pay sixty, seventy dollars a month for a scanner. And they're posting these tickers on Twitter. That's exactly where they're getting it from. So, you know, I feel like the $60, $70 a month is, is more than worth it to make sure that you're the first one in line to get the best possible fill. And if you're trading with like, you know, a five, six hundred, a thousand share position, you could easily make up that monthly fee in like one trade. Let's be real here. So think about it for a second, guys. If, if you don't have a scanner already, if you're waiting out on it, I know I was skeptical. You know, I'm, I'm naturally a cheapo too. I admit it. And uh, you know, I didn't want to pay for these things, but like I said in my blog post when I discussed that you shouldn't be cheaping out on your trading, like you should be treating it like a startup business. Uh, it's true, you know, you gotta you gotta buy these these tools to give you that edge, you know, to be ahead of the game. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump into what we're gonna talk about today, which is the Momo scanner. So um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, take a quick look here. Let's change the time. So most recent alert. So this is I, I break it up into two scanners. Uh, you don't really have to. I just split it up between before eleven thirty and after eleven thirty Eastern time, just because I want to split up the uh, volume criteria separately between uh, the more active morning session and the slightly less active afternoon session. But you don't really have to. It's just something that I do. It's just my preference. Uh, the settings more or less are going to be the same, so not really a big deal. Go ahead and let's look at the alerts so you can see what it found. So you can already see some very familiar tickers. Uh, Myos, M-Y-O-S, pretty big play today. First hit scanners in the morning. Uh, it was an afternoon runner that eventually ran up to close to $7. And, you know, the scanners picked it up uh, well before that, you know, below $2. Um, you can kind of see BIOC was probably the main play out of the gate with the most volume, so it was it was spammed a lot, you know, kind of screaming at you, hey, play B play BIOC, play BIOC. Also, URRE was another one. I didn't personally didn't play it because I'm not a big fan of the way it trades, but you could have played that one as well. Uh, DXTR, another one. Uh, GVO briefly. D DXTR was a pretty pretty big one. So you can kind of see um, some pretty familiar names there. And uh, let's go ahead and look at the afternoon one. 
same thing. I'm going to use its uh, pretty cool historical feature here where you can kind of go back and, and look at what it picked up earlier in the day. So you can see Myos, probably the it stock in the afternoon, uh, lighting, lighting up scanners, not surprisingly. Um, yeah, you can see right there, Myos, also MDVX was also another one that briefly moved as well. But Myos was probably the main stock in the afternoon, uh, and uh, you can clearly see that it lit up scanners. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at the very simple uh, configuration that I have. So I basically split it up into four categories. Uh, you don't really have to do this either. Some of you guys don't even bother playing with stocks with large floats or whatever. But I choose to, you know, split it up into four categories: low float, mid float, high float, very high float, whatever. You know, it's just something that I want to do, and and I want to be able to kind of see. Uh, I have this column here that says strategy name, and it kind of distinguishes it. And today, pretty much all of it were low float plays, anyways. So. But let's go ahead and look at it. Configure, advance. So you want to check new high and pre-market highs. These are part of the default settings. I just kind of left it in there. And um, the float, this is where you can kind of define whatever you want. Uh, I have a pretty loose definition of what a low float is. I leave it up to 50 million. I might change this later in the future. Some of you guys might define a low float as something as low as maybe 5 million shares or less, 10 million shares or less, which is probably more closer to the conventional definition of what low float is nowadays. But I just keep it pretty loose, which is why probably a lot of these stocks came as low float or whatever. Um, but for the most part, this is pretty much up to your interpretation. You could change it to whatever you want, 5, 10, 20. Um, pretty self-explanatory price. Again, another one that's up to your uh, to your preference, uh, you can put whatever price you want. I just leave it at 200 just because you know, dries we had dries go up to 120, so whatever reason. I mean, most of these stocks are probably going to be below ten dollars, anyways. So, if you guys want to put 10, you know, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, shares outstanding, same thing. Uh, I just made it the same number as a float because obviously the float is going to be larger than the share outstanding shares. Uh, time of day, minutes after the open. This is where I restrict my time from the open to about to exactly 11:30. Actually, uh, again, you don't have to restrict the time. I just happen to do that because I like to separate uh, the morning and the afternoon alerts. And these are the key uh, the key configurations that you want to play with here. The key parameters: change five minutes of 10%. That's one. Volume today, 25,000. Of course, uh, you can kind of play with that number however you want. I just kind of realized that 25,000 is a pretty good number. If you kind of, like I said in the previous video with the gap scanner, kind of play with it a little bit. When you go too high, it kind of, uh, you know, it kind of skips out on a couple of stocks. If you go too low, it shoots out too much garbage. So 25,000 was more or less the compromise. If you guys want to play with this and, and it might yield you better results, then uh, feel free to do so. Uh, volume one minute seven hundred. Uh, that's that's another one that's very important. And volume five minute three hundred. So I believe this is something like uh, in one minute it's trading seven uh, seven times to so seven hundred percent. So seven times it's normal volume, and five volume five minute is basically three hundred percent or three times its normal volume. So that's basically what it's saying, I believe. So these are pretty much the parameters that I have. Like I said, nothing really special. It's very simple. Uh, if it's not added on the list, all you have to do is go to search, and you could probably look for it in here, and then and then you know whatever you can just add filter, and then it'll show up on here. So um, that's all you really have to do. That's really really simple. As you can see, it shot up um, a lot of these stocks that came into play today. And again, you know you're more than welcome to play with the parameters however you want. You maybe you want less showing up. Uh, maybe you want more showing up, but the gist of it is those are the parameters that you want to play with Maybe you want to experiment and instead of uh, dealing with you know Let's say 
700%, maybe you want to try 500%, you'll get more results probably. If you want less results, change this to maybe 1,000%. Uh, same thing with this, you know, adjust it up and down, play with it, see how it goes, and then use the historical data feature and backtest the strategy. You know, you can always go back and you know what the plays were on the day. So you can see maybe you can find a certain stock that these settings missed. Um, or you could maybe, you know, you, maybe if you didn't want to see some of this stuff, maybe you thought it was kind of extraneous, then, you know, you can kind of make your, your uh, parameters more restrictive and see if you could, it would just not find one of these that you didn't want. So just play with it, guys. It's definitely very, very flexible. It's a lot of features, a lot of fun. And uh, once you figure it out, it's very, very helpful, and it's a very, very nice tool to have in your trading arsenal. So, that being said, not sure really that much else to say other than um, maybe I can go through my mid float and show you that's pretty much the same thing, except that, yeah, I just changed the float to this one, in this case, 50 million to 100 million. Again, very lax definitions of what a mid float is. Some guys might just say 25 million to 50 million or whatever. Again, open to your interpretation and your preference. Um, in the afternoon, you know, you can kind of see more or less have the same thing. So if I change volume today to 250,000, that way it filters out some of the really low volume junk. So that's the only re that's the only difference, and also the time, uh, 120 to 750, uh, 7:20 basically from 11:30 to the close, and the change five minutes. Uh, one volume one minute, volume five minute, all the same. The only difference here, uh, volume today, two hundred fifty thousand. Again, just to filter out the low volume garbage that I don't want to see it on there. All right, guys. So that's pretty much all I had. Um, hopefully you guys kind of get a chance to, you know, see how I operate my scanners, and uh, hopefully you guys are a little bit less confused. Definitely, like I said, when I first started trade ideas, uh, it looked like. You know, a lot of stuff was going on, a lot of features, and I quickly kind of narrowed it down, kept it simple like always, and uh, just implement the stuff that I need, and that's about it. You know, this is really, really helpful, and, um, you know, once you guys get the hang of it, you guys will probably feel the same way as well. So, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, lots of more video ideas to come. Uh, 2017 has given us lots of opportunities with the way the market's trading to, you know, create lots of... Lots of new ideas for videos, so be on the lookout for that. Alright guys, we'll see you guys next time.